We're building all kinds of things for your cousins over there. Slinky and Blackthroats are getting themselves a really cool enclosure. Oh, he got excited. He said, look at this. That's, a, that's an excited lizard, man. Are you happy? Are you happy? Hey, top of the morning to you folks. We're uh, actually recording our day two build on St. Patrick's Day. You're watching, it's not St. Patrick's Day, but you know what, every day is St. Patrick's Day. So um, as we say on St. Patty's Day, top of the morning to you, and you're supposed to say the rest of the day to you. And look at this fine group of men that have come early. You know what warms my heart? The hat is on his head. <laughs> I mean, when you give a gift, you want to see it being used, and uh, thank God, you, you look good, man. He looks like an action figure, doesn't he? Uh, it's, po it's the Pond Professor action figure with Kung Fu grip and special Camp Cannon gift pack. All right, anyway. Um, all right, so what do we got going on? Here's what we did in the last video, or I, <laughs> I say we very loosely. I didn't do much, but um, the gentleman here from Aquascape, um, you guys are killing it. I can't wait to see this thing uh, flowing and we should have water on later uh, in oh, this video. Yeah, without a doubt. So wow. we got the pond is basically done. We have to finish putting in uh, the river rock and stuff over here, which is gonna be that pre-filter area. Right. So we didn't do like a regular skimmer or anything like that. We don't want Slinky going in or any other animals having a problem. This is the same thing that you have up Love in front. It. Super easy, lower maintenance. I know you have your hands full with a lot of stuff out here, yeah. so we're trying to keep that maintenance down. We dropped in, you cut that awesome uh, branch yep. off of one of the trees, which is incredible. That's just gonna be awesome. So we just gotta finish up some of the detail work around it, get some of the more boulders. We wanna do that little beach area back over in that corner over yeah. there. We can't do that though until we're done moving all that material in, because then that blocks our access for the muck trucks. Gotcha, okay. So we're gonna wait on that. Uh, we got in the blocks over here, which is going to be that separating point yeah, for the two th enclosures. This is this guy's is going to be where we can anchor our wire and then build another structure, uh, which Chris was helping out with. Uh, he's he's not uh, he's up there still. Chris is floating around, but um, you know I am. Uh, I like to say I'm uh, dyslexic when it comes to. Um, construction <laughs> i don't know man i think you do a heck of a job i, I do here. but I, a what it takes me three weeks to do what they can do in an afternoon but anyhow i get it done so we're gonna you know my buddy jerry and i thankfully i have my pal jerry we're gonna connect this this will be the partition separating uh the two different enclosures so i had an idea i know we're gonna get to this uh river waterfall yep. stream yep. whatever um i'm really excited about that because the you know these um uh, although they are a terrestrial species, everything needs water. Everything. Uh, and they're going to drink from it. It'll be clean water. It'll be filtered. Uh, it's just going to be, uh, in my opinion, this will be the ultimate monitor lizard habitat. I'm really excited. we got two different species. But I was thinking, uh, last night, I, I concocted, <laughs> I had an idea. And don't worry, this is not something. So I've got some pavers okay. and a few extra blocks. Uh -huh. And I was thinking, let's make some subterranean burrows oh, cool. for these lizards for wow. slinky and for um and for the rock monitors so yeah. that on cold weather they can go into these Very burrows cool. but yes. also have access from the top because we can kind of hide it um either if we don't have it now i know some people at aquascape and uh perhaps we can get some i was thinking of the lids that cover the yeah, skimmers yeah, yeah 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 um we can they, they're they're a faux rock we can put some um we can put some insulation foam in there exactly yeah. we'll put some foam in there but what i'm thinking of doing is we dig out um we'll dig out maybe over here we got this natural yeah, bit, oh, can we step there. on yeah. this yeah no worries yeah yeah, yeah. let's go oh. Yeah, see, I almost said a bad word. Sorry, I kids. We, we dug yeah. that out but what I'm saying is, once once we've moved some boulders, maybe later we can just dig down. Yeah. Maybe two two of these high. Put the mm -hmm. pavers down as the floor. A couple of cinder blocks. I'll get a tube. We'll bury it. We'll frame it with some rock. Awesome. I love so it. So they can go in. Yeah. And then on the top, I'll have a lid yeah. that looks like you know we awesome. can we can just I lift it up awesome. and I love it. insulated. Yeah. You know, we'll have an insulated area. If I need to, I can throw a, a, you know, a little heat pad in there. But to be perfectly honest, this far south, yeah. if I cover the front, oh, yeah. put the Just lid on. The, the, all that soil in there, that'll, right. that'll, that'll, that'll stabilize. So that I was thinking that would be a really cool thing awesome. for us to do once we started the uh, pond because this is easy to dig. So that's what we're going to do today. 
we got a lot going on, man. Ah, plus, I've got to feed some animals, so you guys are going to come along and see some animals as I feed them uh, while these guys work. So it's going to be a really busy day because even though we got these features being built, we still have animals that need my attention. So I'm going to let the experts do their thing, and uh, let's get right to it. See you in a little bit. This little guy's looking for some more food. So I threw some food out for everybody. We got the pond turtles eating. Let's walk around and uh, see how everyone's doing. I put the food out. I figured you guys have seen that a million times, but let's go visit with the animals just to make sure everyone's doing well. What happens with me is I get involved in these projects and sometimes it's hard just to make sure that I'm keeping up with all my chores that I'm supposed to do every day. The good thing is with the Aquascape guys, they are such a well-oiled machine and they've got Ed here helping guiding them. They really don't need me. So I'm able to come on out and make sure the critters are fed. Look at this. We gave them some of the Fluker's uh, crafted cuisine and the tortoise diet from Fluker. They are really loving it. Um, I like that moist food, man. It's really good for these guys. It gets them hydrated. And uh, of course, we have that tortoise diet, which when you mix it in with the crafted cuisine, the moisture off the cra crafted cuisine uh, definitely rehydrates the tortoise pellets, the tortoise diet that uh, Fluker makes also. So really digging that. Now we're going to head on over and check on the radiata, see what they're up to. Um, we've got a really cool... Uh, Something cool in the next week here, we're gonna have some more radiated tortoises coming our way. Uh, but here they are, look at them, they're out. Gosh, they're just eating. And then it's early morning here, folks. So they are in the sun warming themselves up, which is so cool to see. I love it. So there's eight of them in here. Oh, look at this, an Asian box turtle seems to have been making off with some of the food. Oh, there's one eating. Eating with the radiated, look at that. They're having a dinner date, little breakfast date. So there you can see these guys, uh, the box turtles here, the Amboyanensis, uh, they love to come out and they'll nibble on this food as well. So it's really cool. This guy's gonna drop right into the water, I think. Yep, see you later, buddy. Right off it, wow, pretty brave. Anyhow, so they're good. Awesome stuff, man. This is great. Okay, you know who we're going to visit next. If you've been watching the channel, you know the route. There they are. Oh yeah, they wow, they cleaned out their bowls so quick. Socrates, Darwin over there, and Nostradamus. Good job, kids. Man, that didn't take long, but they have the evidence all over their face. My goodness. Hey, what's up there, Nostradamus? How are you doing, my Aldabra tortoise? Beautiful little guy here. Oh my gosh, he's about 160 pounds nowadays. And I've had him now 17 years. It'll be 17 years in August, so a uh, long time. 16 years for that one right there. That is Socrates. Oh, you're gonna eat a little dried uh, bamboo, huh? All right, it washes down the tortoise diet nicely. Very good, and then let's see, she's peeking over. There's my girl, Darwin. Hey, Darwin, how you doing, hon? We're building all kinds of things for your cousins over there. Slinky and Blackthroats are getting themselves a really cool enclosure. So, um, I just wanted to make sure that I pop in on these animals and give you guys an update on them. Pretty excited about that. So uh, let's move on. The elongators, the cherry heads are doing their thing. I moved the leprechauns out of that uh, back enclosure because I didn't want them to get smashed with all the activity going on. Lumpy's over there. He's sunbathing right now. The monitors have already eaten. And I guess we need to check in on our redfoots, I know I just put some food out for them, so they're gonna be doing their thing. Guapo and Lola are okay. I even fed the turtles in the back pond. So here's everybody. They're doing their thing. Very good. All right. Hey, there's an empty tray. What are you guys doing? Oh man, all 27 of them are probably out here. There's Lego getting her fill. And then we've got the Fly River and Badiger turtles uh, eating in here. So everyone has gone to town, but let's see what the progress is on this waterfall. It's been about an hour since we last visited our friends here at Aquascape. 
This is actually one of the more technical parts of building the pond, I would believe, is when you're figuring out the waterfalls and streams. And the cool thing about what's happening right now is there's a lot of folks that have volunteered to come down and help. And they do that because they get to spend time with Ed. Um, and Ed is, you guys know, Ed is just a master at building uh, these water features. He's been doing it for years. He's also um, a marine biologist. So he's got a lot of uh, technical knowledge and book smarts and just just oh, yeah, real world uh experience with this so he's one part scientist one part uh contractor and another part artisan so it's really cool to watch what's happening right now so some of these young guys like casey uh right over here they're beginning their business and they're getting hands-on tutelage from the best right on dude maybe get a log or something in here Looks like I'm gonna go have to. I'm gonna have to get a new chainsaw blade. I was. <laughs> gonna ask the question did you, did you need morning? a log? Looks I, like I'm running up to the hardware uh, store. It would be nice. Hey, the first okay. folks up the road were real nice this morning. Were they? Yeah, they're, they're good. Good hardware store up yeah. there. Yeah. All right, so Ed, you know, would you say this is one of the more technical aspects of doing the ponds? Is the stream and waterfall? Yeah, definitely. Because anytime you start getting water in motion, you have to make sure that um, you get the water going where you want it. Okay. Otherwise, the water starts going over the on the outside edges. If you don't have your elevations right, uh, the waterfall is not going to look right. It's not going to sound right. So yeah, you have to understand your flow rate. So what I always look at. I look at the output of the pump and then I figure how much water width I have to work with. Okay. So with this type of stone, um, it's relatively, it's kind of jagged, but um, to get about an inch of water going over it, I want to have about 3,000 gallons per hour per foot wow. of waterfall width. So we have a four to eight pump. Okay, so right four to eight thousand gallons. Four to eight thousand. So this is about two foot wide. So that's going to give us almost four thousand gallons per hour oh, per that's foot. Smart. That's good. So, so I'm always thinking of those numbers. Like how much water do I have to work with, and then we could figure out how much space. I don't want to make a massive one, because then the water is going to look really trickly and yeah. that type of stuff. So we oh, this is going to have flow. Yeah, it's going to have flow. That's going to be great. And uh, again, guys, the rock iguanas will be in this area. Um, they're going to be able to wander around, soak if they wish, drink out of these pools. Uh, we're going to have some plants that are going to shade this keep it warm uh, excuse me keep it cooler in the summer um, again we've given it some topography guys this is really just the beginning once we get this pond done that's when I'm gonna get to work with my buddy Jerry we're gonna enclose it build more wall but the most fun part is when I get to start planting it and tweaking it for the animals and that'll be coming up in another video you don't worry about that this is really a massive project for me so i wanted to break it up into two videos for the pond build and then we're going to go ahead and get you uh keep you updated as i get this thing completely done and we'll have a grand opening video when i enclose or put the animals in the enclosure which will be just tremendous to see them interacting with it. all right i'm going to let them continue i'm going to run up to the hardware store get a chainsaw blade so they can continue continue to have things to work with and don't worry the tree needed to be removed anyway because it is actually near uh, buttercup's shed and I don't want it to fall on her shed so let me get to work I'll be right back and uh, we'll, we'll continue this build Still the Camp Cannon look-alike over here. <laughs> he's starting to rub off on me. Done enough projects with him over the years, and now he's giving me hats, which is pretty awesome. So, which is good because it is smoking hot and that sun is beaten on my bald head. So let's go check this thing out. This is a really cool little detail that uh, Cannon, you thought of it this last night, right? Yeah, I, Laying I in bed. <laughs> I had a dream. Two lizards living in a subterranean dwelling happily. Uh. Um, and uh, it worked. So. Um, what we did here, and, and I've done similar things like this before on my channel where, you know, we take some of this corrugated uh, large drainage pipe, cut it in half, it gives us a nice rigid structure. You guys actually used it for the bridge in my rec pond. So I, uh, I borrow, we all borrow from each other. But what we did is um, we just built up a bunker 
This is all going to get filled up with more soil. Remember, this is going to come up another couple of feet. It'll retain soil in this area, so this is going to be hidden. We're going to cut ourselves a nice plywood piece, cut a hole in the plywood, and we're going to go with, there okay. over there faux we rock. have a uh, faux rock skimmer cover from Aquascape that we're going to have and maybe put some flat rock around it to hold it in place. Then I can peer in or retrieve the animal if I need to, check on its well-being but it will be a naturally insulated uh, by the earth bunker for these animals. The key is, is now we're making it look like part of the landscape and I think that is the true fun. So if you come over here, check out this rock, you know, Ed picked out this great rock and he had a, you know, you had a great idea, but this is how the collaborative, uh, the collaborative works. I understand these, these reptiles and they really want to feel secure. So they want to squeeze through something because that if they can like get through tight, it, hole, it tight seems open. tight. But I promise you, that black throat can definitely get through there. He'll feel good about it because he'll know that predators can't follow him in. He is a predator, but he's also prey at times. So we're, we're trying to give this animal enrichment. We're trying to give it an, a habitat that really suits the animal's needs. So this is going to be awesome. In some ways, this will help make the habitat very become very unique and dialed for the animals we're putting in it. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's great, man. It's looking great. So what we get, we need what another rock over here. Yeah, on this we'll get corner. a rock here. We get some rocks built, built up, in up here, here, and we'll use the uh, the the foam. Yep. And that's gonna seal up any drafts or any cr uh, you know cracks in the rock. It'll adhere it. I've got some mud mixed up. We'll get some of that in there too. And uh, listen, man. That, that's where I want to be in the next hurricane, to be honest. <laughs> I'll be in there with my lizard. I'll look like some kind of yoga freak that fits in a box, but at least I'll be safe. It's going to be a really secure place for this animal. To, to now, would they go in? So you're talking about, I know it gets cold down here, yep. so that, that, that'll be, you know, nice they'll, and they'll stable. Retreat, yeah. will, they, will they go in there in really intense heat as well? They Does will. it get too hot for them? They want to exactly cool off a little right. bit? They're being cold-blooded. They're ectotherms. They're going to want to uh, do behavioral modification in order to regulate their body temperature. Um, and yeah, when we get a full sun day, they'll bask in the morning, but then they get a little too hot during midday. Mm -hmm. They'll retreat because as we know, any kind of subterranean cave or uh, dwelling always is cooler during the day but warmer during the night so it's a really interesting phenomenon you know with all that insulation around you it's just a nice natural way now if it gets unseasonably cold or, or you know cold to like we don't normally see in Florida uh, I can easily uh, drop in a heat mat which will just keep the temperature just comfortable for these animals remember you just want to take the edge off you can kill a lizard quicker with warmth than you can with cold interesting yeah it's wow true. Learn something every day, right? That's it. Awesome, man. awesome. All Thank right. You. Well, this is looking great. The uh, stream is that's looking great now as well because we got water in it. So it's I, looking. I now we're starting to see what this big pool is taking shape. Um, I love the little beach areas that we got in here where they can just kind of crawl themselves down inside, have access to all those logs and all that stuff. You know where they're just going to be kicking back, relaxing, lounging. If they want to take a quick dip, they can hop off. Uh, but that the log actually dips down into the water, comes up above. It's going to take them to different elevations. The other thing that I think we need to do here is back over here where Glenn is at, we'll probably drop in a couple more big boulders because like uh, Kenan was talking about, these guys are found in mountainous areas and well, yeah, just and, put and in big giant boulders and right. stuff they're like that. They're actually in savannas with those outcroppings. Awesome. So they're always hiding around those. They're like islands in this sea of prairie uh, and those are safe places for them. So they'll hunt in and around there and they can get away from problems. But uh, Glenn had a really great line that I think he should share with you. Oh, them. yeah. <laughs> These are like bougie lizards. They're going to have a waterfall right outside their front door. I'm not real sure of many lizards that have that kind of setup. Nice. Not many, oh, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Only the best at the camp. That's awesome. All right. So let's strap up another big rock or two. Drop it in right where you're at, I think. And then we need another big one right here. And we're going to be turning this on pretty soon.
So guys, it's time now to show Slinky, give him a little preview of his new home. So we're gonna bring Slinky out. Oh, oh watch yourself. I'm doing good. Hey Slink. Oh, there he is. Thank you, Bruno. Oh. Oh, look, we also have Blake's hanging out. Come here, Blake. Say hello to everybody. Blake made the trip down up from Fort Lauderdale to help out here today. Check out, he's another fan on? of Aquascape. Hey, Blake. We're gonna feed Slinky. So here he is, he thinks he's flying right now, but check it out, guys. Look at what we did for him. Again, we are not 100% done with this habitat, but uh, I wanted Slinky to be here when we turned the pumps on, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is your new, this is all for you, Slinky Poo. Come here. All right, what do you say? So like, that one is going to be cold. Oh no, it'll be good, man. All right, so there he is, Slinky's new pond. This is not 100% done yet, but um, I figured why not get him out here. He's checking it out. This is going to be his spot. Oh wow, Slinky, what do you think? Oh, it's a little, that water's a little too dirty for you right now. We got to get those pumps started up. Start them up, guys. Um, I'll tell you what, Blake. Why don't you go ahead and get a chicken on the uh, yeah. get a chicken on the tongs, and we'll have you feed uh, we'll have you feed the slinks because he's around a lot of new people right now, yeah. so he's going to be a little bit nervous. Yeah. But he's I'm pretty excited. That's what he's looking for. Yeah, he's looking for snakes, but he's going to deal with chicks. Go ahead, Blake. What do you got? Come on, slink. Look at this. Oh man, the jets are going. Hold on. We don't want to miss this. Okay. This is awesome. Look at that, Slinky. Look at that. Oh, there you go. Wow. Now you're Never friends with Blake. The start of a waterfall and the feeding of an Asian water right. That is so cool, right? And we are documenting the heck out of this, aren't we? You guys are going to be able to check this build out on Ed the Pond Professor's YouTube channel and Greg the Pond Guy as well. Go make sure you uh, follow along on their channels. Head on over, check out what Blake's got going on. And you guys can see it all unfold here right now. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. So I'm really excited because this is just the first stage. We got we got the pond done. Of course, I'm going to plant. We're going to get that water nice and clean. Um, we're going to completely uh, enclose this structure um, or this habitat, and we're going to divide it in half so that Slinky will be in this area. Oh, look at that. Good job, Blake. Nice. <laughs> No worries. I'll tell you what, we could try getting his attention and then throwing it in the water, which might be pretty cool. He is uh, not shy when it comes to food. And I just want to right now say thanks to everybody out here um, who busted their butts the last two days. I, I say this all the time, but you guys are really helping my dreams come true. And I uh, made new friends. And uh, if I forget your names, because I'm a numbskull, but I know that's Case Graham, Casey. What are you doing? I'm Casey. You're Casey. Casey. You're Cameron. They're brothers out of Claremont. I did remember that. Oh man, but uh, Bruno, I, I mean Chris, thank you guys so much. And when we're done filming the video, I'll give you guys, I'm gonna go get dirty and get in the pond and I'll pull out some interesting creatures for you. So uh, look at him. Of course he's gonna be investigating every nook and cranny. But uh, all right, Blake, what do you got, man? Good. Let's get his attention and bring him over towards the water. Look at that waterfall. So cool. Come on, Slink. Make him work for it, Blake. Make him work. Come on. Oh, uh, he. Well, you know what I've noticed? When the water is cloudy like this, yeah. he's nervous because where they're from, there are saltwater crocodiles. So I wonder if he's like, no, I don't know this water yet. So he's not going to take that chance. But he's got no problem eating these. Uh, chicks man so this is going to be a cool habitat for him so that we don't have to worry about him what eating our snakes, <laughs> snakes yes we're going to keep him in here um i've gone ahead and i'm going to make sure that this enclosure conforms to fwc's latest rules on prohibitive uh animals which he is not a prohibited animal yet but i want to go ahead and be proactive and be responsible to make sure that we build something uh, that it that is within FWC's um, actual guidelines, so that I don't have to retrofit this thing. That's gorgeous. Oh, a little lazy there. Awesome. Good man. And he does look majestic hanging out here. So imagine when we have this all planted, folks. There's going to be all kinds of pothos and vines and philodendron and alocasia. 
and it will be a really cool habitat for the slinx. We've got logs, we've got a jet of water running right there to circulate. He can lay up on these logs. Uh, I just think it's tremendous. The black throats are gonna be in this section and you can see the shallow pools right here. Just beautiful shallow pools for them to explore. And then, man, you are just finishing up the touches here. We've got a lid. We're gonna be able to open it up. Oh wait, he's going in the water. Yeah, good man. Nice, Blake, good job. Dragon tamer. Awesome job, Slinky. Very cool. But hey, well, let me show everyone. So the black throats will be able to crawl through here. And then if I need to get them, we just lift that up and we'll be able to access uh, the animals in there. And Slinky's gonna get one over here. I'm gonna build another one for Slinky over here. How many is that? From all over. How many? How many of this is probably seven already? All right, we'll finish up with those last two. We gotta save some for the other kids. But uh, good job, guys. Really, thank you guys. Very cool, you guys rule. Appreciate it. There he is. <laughs> That's not a hat. That's a hat. <laughs> now he's really kicking it. So um, I'm really grateful. Thank you so Appreciate much, it, as always. I love you know, it, man. Love coming we, down here. So we almost lost before. Slinky. He almost died. You guys called me and said, look, we want to do something really cool for us. Oh, he's disappearing. Look at this. Awesome. That is awesome. He's like, later. It's a jet on the bottom. It's yes. Like that is awesome. cool. This is how these animals <laughs> should be kept. If they're going to be kept in captivity, this is what you have to do for them. Uh, it's about giving them space, giving them enrichment. You brought this to life. They called me up. They wanted to do something special for them. I knew I had to build something. I was so lucky that Slinky survived. Um, I just want to spoil him the rest of his life because I feel like I got a second chance with this animal. Uh, so many of you out there love this guy. I wanted to show you how much I love him. And everyone else at Aquascape loves him too. So there he is. Slinky's looking just tremendous. And this enclosure is going to evolve. We're going to film a lot in here. And uh, again, this is just a taste of what we're going to do. Uh, it is not even close to completion, but one major, major step, the centerpiece of the enclosure is completely done. So guys, thanks so much. My thanks to Aquascape. Make sure you follow them in the links below. Uh, also, look out for all these awesome contractors out here because they are from your neck of the woods. If you have a dream that you want to make reality for your animals and for your family in your backyard, each one of these guys is a talented aquascape artist. Look at this. Look at this. It's a slinky head. And he's going to go under there. That is exactly what we imagined when Ed and I were designing this with this log. It's just, he's, he, I think that's an excited lizard. They can't smile but I think his eyes tell it all and his behavior is just really excited. So guys, follow along, comment, let me know what you think of this pond, uh, and follow Aquascape. These guys are doing a great job for the animals that we love. We'll talk to you guys all soon. I leave you now with Slinky. I think he's making a poopy, but hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Good stuff. Thanks everybody. Seriously guys, how cool is this? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he got excited. He said, look at this. That's, a, that's an excited lizard. Guys. Are you happy? Are you happy? Huh? Of course. Are you kidding me? He came right to me. That was his way of saying thank you. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you later.